so it looks like the DNC and the DMC chair, Tom Perez, are up to the same tricks that they employed in 2016 to um, steal the nomination from Bernie Sanders and prop up Hillary Clinton. And that led us to <laughs> getting Donald Trump as our president. So this is from the Gray Zone by Kevin... Gaz Tola, I believe is how you say his name. To rig primary against Bernie, DNC Chair Tom Perez nominates regime change agents, Israel lobbyists, and Wall Street consultants. I'm not going to go through this whole article because it's pretty in-depth and, and lengthy, but I'll leave it in the comment sections down below. It's definitely worth reading in its um, entirety. But I'm just going to highlight some of the more interesting points uh, that kind of caught my attention. Democratic National Committee Chair Tom Perez has nominated dozens of lobbyists, corporate consultants, think tank board members, and former officials linked to the presidential campaigns of Barack Obama and Bill and Hillary Clinton to serve on the Democratic National Committee nominating committee this July. Many of Perez, Perez's nominees are vocal opponents of Bernie Sanders and spoke out against his campaign when he challenged Hillary Clinton for the nomination in 2016. Just as it did in 2016, the DNC appears determined to sabotage a Sanders nomination, foisting a collection of neoliberal and imperialist hacks onto the convention committee Excuse me, to hold back a popular rebellion against the policies of endless war and corporate free trade that, that they have personally presided over. And so there's the list. <clears throat> Only a small percentage of those on the roster, such as communications workers of America President Larry Cohen, are even remotely aligned or sympathetic to Sanders' progressive agenda, and many of them are 2020 superdelegates. And then, though the Democratic Party reduced the influence of superdelegates after a backlash from Sanders supporters, more than 700 superdelegates will be able to vote as part of a brokered convention if the Democratic Senator is not the nominee after the first ballot. They would not have to vote for Sanders, even if he won a majority of pledged delegates in their state's caucus or primary. So think about that for a sec. These 700 people handpicked by the Democratic establishment could go against the will of the voters if after the first ballot... Um, in, in a bro broker convention, they could go against the will of the voters and, you know, prop up, you know, a neoliberal centrist hack like Joe Biden or Pete Buttigieg or, to a lesser extent, um, you know, Elizabeth Warren. And somehow this is democratic or representative of the will of the people. There should be no such thing as super super delegates it's just insane to think about that you have these party hacks who are only beholden to you know the establishment and their corporate interest and you know handlers just insane that this still exists in quote the democratic party <clears throat> sanders could could secure enough pledged delegates to win on the first ballot and still find his agenda thwarted by the standing committees. For example, members of the DNC's platform committee beholden to corporate interests could vote against measures including Medicare for All or a ban on natural natural fracking, I should say natural gas fracking, in the agenda of policies they plan to fight for in 2020. A close look at the list of the list Perez issued offers a gruesome vision of morally repugnant operatives rigging the game on behalf of a desperate and increasingly discredited party elite. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, yeah, so Dennis McDonough was nominated to the chair. The platform committee it was Obama's chief of staff during his second term. McDonough is a senior principal for the Markle Foundation and chair of the Rework, Rework America Task Force. Um, to, and so this Dennis McDonough character uh, helped form the Rework uh, America Business Network, which included 
the pretty shady founding members, Archer Daniels Midland Company, Boeing, Duke Energy, Kaiser Permanente, McKinsey and Company, Pete Booty Judge's former uh, place of work, Microsoft, Stanley, Black & Decker, Walmart, Zerk Insurance, and 20th Century Fox. Um, I also received port from Google, so not exactly getting uh, <laughs> support from grassroots movement, but these giant multinational corporations, and obviously this Dennis McDonough person would do the bidding of said uh, corporations, and obviously that's you know the complete opposite of what a Bernie Sanders agenda or platform um, would represent. It looks like he was acting on behalf of the CIA, pushed for more redactions in the torture report summary. Let's see. Um, our, yeah, apartheid Israeli operatives occupy the DNC, talking about Bakari Sellers, Dan Shapiro, Megan Stabler. Each has defined themselves as pro-Israel Democrat, providing reliable to cover to the apartheid state that is increasingly unpopular among younger members of the party, and also it should be pointed out, I believe Bernie's the only candidate running for president who said he'd be willing to um, leverage the billions of dollars of military aid that we give to Israel each year if they continue to treat the Palestinian people in such a um, just morally um, repugnant way. And of course, people like Bukhari Sellers and these other neoliberal establishment Democratic hacks aren't aren't going to do that. And then look, there's a picture of him with uh, Sheldon Abelson. He said, "Reminder: Just an example of how Israel can bring parties together at APAC." <laughs> and then so this is Sellers on on uh, the BDS movement. We must repudiate all efforts to malign, isolate, undermine Israel and the Jewish people. He added. We have to be unified in fighting back against BDS, referring to the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement for Palestinian rights. Um, and then, so this is his uh, talking about Bernie. So he's obviously he was a Kamala, I think, national surrogate, and definitely very anti-Bernie in his in his politics. Um, the Bernie campaign has a, quote, long way to go with black voters, and when Sanders entered the 2020 race, Sellers reacted, quote, I don't have a problem with Bernie getting in the race. When is he getting out is probably a better question. And actually, um, Bernie has the, out of any presidential candidate, has the most support of young um, black voters, and his support of, among uh, older, older black voters has gone up uh, quite a bit. Let's see, what else do we got here? So yeah, more just neoliberal hacks, not willing to call out uh, Israel in, in any substantive way. Regime change experts defend the corporate order. Let's see. Um, so there's people that support the National Endowment for uh, democracy, a regime change outfit President Ronald Reagan established after a political backlash against the CIA in the 1970s. <clears throat> um, yeah, and then there's a group uh, involved in the fermenting in the uprising in Hong Kong. And then Wall Street bankers, corporate lobbyists, free trade f fanatics. Dewey Square Group, three employees of the Dewey Square Group, a lobbying firm that's fought against several progressive reforms. Charlie Baker, the president and co-founder of DSG, Minion Moore, a principal at DSG, and Maria Cardona, a principal at DSG, also a, as it points out down here, a contributor to CNN, where she frequently goes on to smear and attack uh, Bernie Sanders. So no wonder she gets appointed to the DNC. They need as many party hacks who will just tow the establishment line and just critique Bernie Sanders. Oh, yeah. She's criticized, uh, you know, Venezuela on Univision. Let's see. 
and then Cardona repurposed the reactionary line of attack in December 2019, questioning Sanders' electability in an op-ed for The Hill. Quote, if, if Elizabeth Warren and Sanders remain among top Democratic tier, they will. Trump will continue to try to paint all Democrats as radical socialists who want to turn U.S. into Venezuela. So just parodying, obviously, right-wing talking points. And look at that. Could Cardona work for the Commerce Department as a lead communications strategist for the passage of NAFTA in 1993? She was a senior advisor and spokesperson for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign in 2018. So these are the type of party hacks that the DNC is, um, you know, pointing to these positions that if it is a brokered convention, they will do everything they can to make sure the nominee doesn't go to Bernie Sanders, and then you have Barney Franks, openly hostile to Bernie Sanders, and now he's on the board of Signature Bank. Look at that. Um, became a go-to lender for the Trump family, as well as the family of Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law. Let's see. So, again, it's just... That, and then Podesta... He was one of the people that helped, you know, rig the 2016 primary in Hillary Clinton's favor. And now he's on the Rules Committee. Look at that. What a joy. And then, yeah. and then so this is from uh, Podesta. Leaked email from two, 20, February 2016. Podesta agreed in principle that Sanders needed to be ground to a pulp. Where would you stick the knife in? Podesta wondered. Let's see. So again, it's more of the same old playbook. The establishment is very scared about the threat that the Bernie Sanders campaign and the movement he represents poses to their power and their, you know, positions of prestige and all that. And, you know, this just shows they're, they're going to do everything within their power to try to disenfranchise the, the voters out of a Bernie Sanders nomination. And, you know, it says even, how crazy is that? Even if a majority of voters, either in a primary or a caucus, voted for a candidate, let's say Bernie Sanders, the superdelegates, if it gets to, I think, the second round of voting in a broker convention, they could go against the will of a majority of those voters and prop up, you know, one of their neoliberal establishment hacks. And, you know, the best way to potentially prevent the DNC from engaging in this trickery would be for Bernie Sanders to get just an overwhelmingly high amount of you know delegates at the convention so it doesn't have to go to a second round just you know a huge amount of overwhelming support is one way to kind of fight back against this but besides that like i said these these establishment party hacks are going to do everything they can to cheat bernie sanders out of the nomination like they did in 2016 so we need to do everything in our power to you know point out DNC's uh, shenanigans again, but also make sure that, you know, Bernie Sanders goes into the convention with enough delegates and support that, you know, they aren't able to pull their tricks like they did in 20, 2016. Uh, those are my thoughts. Share yours in the comment sections down below. Peace. Peace.